Hello, and today is a very exciting day because this is the release of Spelljammer Adventures in Space, the most recent campaign setting slash adventure slash monster bestiary for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. This is a classic campaign setting that's been brought forward into 5th edition, and people have been clamoring for this one for so, so long, so there's a ton to explore here. Before we get too far into it, I am actually currently running a giveaway for a digital copy of this book available through dndbeyond.com. So if you are watching this video today, Tuesday, August 16th, before around 5 p.m., you still have a chance to enter. I have not selected the winners yet, so I'll leave a link in the description as well as in the, the top right corner here. So what I wanted to talk about today are the six new races that we got with Spelljammer, and those are the Astral Elf, the Autonome, the Gif, the Hadozi, the Plasmoid, and the Three Kreen. I am going to be releasing some additional Spelljammer content, as well as some more giveaways and some D&D history, so if you like what I do on this channel, please uh, feel free to drop a subscription. It would mean the world to me. All right, so we're going to get into it with the first one, which is the Astral Elf. So let's go take a look here. So Astral Elf traits, you are a humanoid. Um, your size is medium, your walking speed is 30 feet, you have a feature called Astral Fire, you know one of the following cantrips of your choice, Dancing Lights, Light, or Sacred Flame. You can use Intelligence, Wisdom, or Charisma as your spellcasting ability for it, and you choose which one when you select the race. This is a pretty nice consistent thing that's been introduced since uh, Tasha's Culture of Everything. I love how they give you that additional flexibility, and we're going to see a lot of that through these as well. Uh, you have Dark Vision, which is awesome, Fey Ancestry, you have advantage on saving throws against a charm condition, so... Again, this is the this is consistent amongst all elves pretty much within 5e. Keen senses as well. You get the uh, proficiency in the perception skill, which is great. Uh, here we have a different feature called Starlight Step. As a bonus action, you can magically teleport up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space that you can see. You can use this trait a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. Very, very handy for either, you know, getting out of a really tricky situation or getting into a tricky situation, depending on what you're trying to do. So uh, really cool feature. I love like Misty Step has always been one of my favorite uh, spells in the game. And this is just a really cool, like natural way to do it without having to use a spell slot. So it's pretty sweet. So with Astral Trance, you have the sort of normal elf thing where you don't actually need to take a full eight hours for your long rest. You can't be magically put to sleep, but you also get the bonus of whenever you finish the trance, you gain proficiency in one skill of your choice and with one weapon or tool of your choice, selecting the player's handbook, blah, 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 blah. This is pretty cool um, to be able to kind of dynamically shift around your, your proficiencies. I don't think this is the first time that we've seen it, but uh, it is still a really nice feature. I think this is really cool for anyone who's, you know, really focused on, on min-maxing or, or, or even just, you know, playing a very adaptable creature. Um, I think this is pretty awesome. Next up is the Autonome. So we're going to take a look at some of the features here. You are a construct, your size is small, though you still gain a 30-foot 30, uh, 30 foot walking speed, which is interesting because some of the older ones were only 25. Uh, you have armored casing. You are encased in a thin metal or some other durable material while you aren't wearing your armor. Your base AC is 13 plus your dex modifier. Honestly, that's pretty sweet. Kind of makes contextual sense as well, given that they are made from sort of metal or steel or something. Pretty awesome. Uh, a feature called Built for Success, you can add a d4 to one attack roll, ability check, or saving throw that you make, and you can do this after seeing the d20 roll, but before the effects of the roll have been resolved. You can then use this a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you gain all expended uses when you completed the long rest. It's pretty cool. This is like a mini self-inspiration that you can only do, obviously, proficiency time bonuses per long rest, which, you know, at, at higher levels, if anyone ever really gets there, you, it's a maximum of six times a day which is pretty cool, you know, to be able to add a potential D4, but even twice a day in the early levels or three times is pretty sweet. Next up is Healing Machine. It says, if the Mending spell is cast on you, you can spend a hit dice, roll it, and regain a number of hit points equal to the roll plus your constitution modifier to a minimum of one hit point. In addition, your creator designed you to benefit from several spells that preserve life, but that normally do not affect constructs. Cure wounds, healing word, mass cure wounds, mass healing word, and spare the dying. This is a nice little touch because this wasn't really always consistent in some of the older kind of iterations on these things. So it's nice to see that like, you know, officially codified into um, sort of into the actual race feature itself. That's pretty cool. It also just helps logistically for the party. You don't have to have someone carrying mending around just for the sake of healing their uh, their autonome. Um, so it just it, it's a little bit of a convenience feature, to be honest, but it's nice to see. Your mechanical nature, you have resistance to poison damage and immunity to disease, and you have advantage on saving throws against being paralyzed and poisoned. You also do not need to eat, drink, or breathe. This, honestly, again, just makes sense. There's no reason why they would need to eat, drink, or breathe. Uh, I, there's no way they could be poisoned or paralyzed, so it, it makes a lot of sense contextually, and, you know, this this really kind of narrows the scope for what uh, what a class in this race 
could be, you know, could do. They could be used for very particular fetch missions where maybe you have to go underwater or maybe they have to, you know, enter into some cavern or some cave or something where there is poisonous gases kind of floating around. This can be very, very beneficial to a group in those kinds of situations. You don't need to use something like protection from poison or lesser restoration or anything like that. You can just kind of use this person in your group to be able to really benefit the party to a great degree. And I think that's pretty cool. Next up is Century's Rest. It says, when you take a long rest, you spend at least six hours in an inactive, motionless state instead of sleeping. In this state, you appear inert, but you remain conscious. So presumably you are aware of your surroundings, but again, it's interesting that it's six hours. So you're kind of threading the threading the middle between the sort of elves four hours and the normal eight hours. So you need a little bit less. I don't really know how much of a mechanical difference it's going to make. The ability to remain conscious is potentially useful, so that's kind of nice. Last up is Specialized Design. It says you gain two tool proficiencies of your choice selected from the player's handbook. I think this is really cool. I actually really like the recent uh, emphasis and focus on tool proficiencies for, for races and classes and things like that. Because there hasn't really been that much of a focus on it. You know, we did get some expansion of, of the tools rules in Xanathar's Guide to Everything, but there hasn't really been much since then. And, and I feel like it's a really underdeveloped aspect of 5e. So I think it'd be really cool if we got more of that in the, the 2024 update to the player's handbook, whatever, whatever sort of form that takes or whatever that looks like. I think there's a lot of room to kind of grow and expand what we consider uh, useful for, for tool proficiencies. Next up is the GIF. This is a bit of an interesting one. These are kind of like hippo looking people. So let's take a look here. So GIF traits, you are a humanoid, your size is medium, your walking speed is 30 feet, and you have a swimming speed equal to your walking speed. A nice little touch there. There's also a feature called Astral Spark. It says your psychic connection to the astral plane enables you to mystically access a spark of divine power, which you can channel through your weapons. When you hit a target with a simple or martial weapon, you can cause the target to take extra force damage equal to your proficiency bonus. You can use this a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, uh, but you can use it no more than once per turn. You regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. This is honestly really cool. At first, when I read it, I didn't realize that second paragraph where it talked about uh, proficiency bonus times per day. I'm like, this is just awesome. It's at a minimum of a flat two force damage every single turn, which is pretty cool. But obviously, it, there is a uh, limited use. But, you know, still being able to use it two, three, four times for most characters per long rest is probably going to be more than enough. And that's just a nice little consistent bonus damage. And almost nothing is resistant to force damage. So it's nice to see. And that's pretty sweet. Next up is Firearms Mastery. It says you have a mystical connection to firearms that traces back to the gods of the gif who delighted in such weapons. You have proficiency with all firearms and ignore the loading property of any firearm. In addition, attacking at long range with a firearm does not impose disadvantage on your attack roll. I could be super wrong, but this might be the first race that has a natural um, like firearms mastery, can ignore the, the loading property. Uh, that's kind of cool, you know, really pushing in a different direction. It makes a lot of thematic sense with the whole spell jammer, spell jamming kind of thing. Uh, space travel, it's pretty cool. It's a nice little addition, very different from what you see from most classes. So I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Last up is the, last up is Hippo Build. This is you have advantage on strength based ability checks and strength saving throws. In addition, you count as one size larger when determining your carrying capacity and the weight that you can push, drag, or lift. One thing that is interesting to note here is because it does say you have advantage on strength based ability checks, that is not limited exclusively to athletics and just a straight strength check, which typically would be the only two abilities that have that, those, those skills tied to them. But um, one of the rules in the player's handbook that often goes overlooked is that you can actually change the sort of base ability that comes with a skill. So, so for example, intimidation does not have to be charisma. You could potentially make a strength-based charisma check depending on the nature of the circumstances that are surrounding that check. If someone is using their, their you know, massive strength and presence and you know, throwing barrels around a room to try and get a point across, you could use a strength-based intimidation check and then they would gain advantage on that. So really good to know, good tip for DMs to always kind of have that in your back pocket and also really just good for the gift to be able to have that kind of flexibility. Next up is the Hadozi or the Hadozi. I'm honestly not really sure how to pronounce it, but I'm going to go with Hadozi because I think it sounds kind of fun. Um, honestly, this is some pretty cool looking guys. Um, so let's take a look. Uh, you're following racial traits. You are a humanoid. Your size is medium or small. You choose when you select the race. Your walk speed is 30 feet and you get a climbing speed equal to your walking speed. Again, nice little touch. Not often that we do get climbing speed, so it's pretty cool. You also have Dexter's Feet. It says, as a bonus action, you can use your feet to manipulate an object, open or close a door, or to pick up or set down a tiny object. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Really, really specific. But if your hands are tied and bound, this gives you 
another potential avenue for escape or to do something that you might not otherwise be able to do. So it's a nice little touch that we get to see the, the races kind of distinguishing themselves from each other a little bit more. Next up is Glide. It says if you are not incapacitated or wearing heavy armor, you can extend your skin membranes and glide. When you do so, you can perform the following aerial maneuvers. You can move five feet horizontally for every one foot you descend in the air at no movement cost to you. And when you would take damage from a fall, you can use your reaction to reduce the fall's damage to zero. This is super cool. Uh, also, this can let you potentially fly really far. If you're on like a hundred foot ledge or something, you could potentially go 500 feet without using any movement at all. I mean, yeah, it would take a while, but it's still pretty cool. And just being able to completely ignore any kind of fall damage, um, that's awesome. Really, really cool feature. I love it. Lastly is Hedozi Resilience. Uh, the magic that runs in your veins heightens your natural defenses. When you take damage, you can use your reaction to roll a d6, add your proficiency bonus to the number rolled, and reduce the damage you take by an amount equal to the total minimum of zero damage. You can use this a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you gain all of them when you, expend, when you finish a long rest. So, again, just a really cool way of reducing damage. Really flexible. That can be potentially extremely valuable in the early levels, um, where just about anything can randomly kill a first or second level character. So... A uh, really nice way of kind of having that initial survivability. Long term, it probably won't have that much of an impact considering you're really maxing out at 12 uh, reduced damage at the absolute top end. So a nice little feature, definitely going to be, you know, much more valuable in the early game than later on. Next up, we got the Plasmoid. These are some <laughs> interesting looking dudes. We got some oozes, which is kind of fun. Uh, so you are an ooze. Uh, you're medium or small. You choose this when you select the race. Your walking speed is 30 feet. You are amorphous. You can squeeze through a space as narrow as one inch wide, provided you are wearing or carrying nothing. You have advantage on ability checks when you initiate or escape a grapple. These are some pretty cool features and abilities that really play well into being an ooze or what my idea or concept of being an ooze would be, so I like it. Next up, we got Dark Vision. Um, classic. You can hold your breath for up to an hour. Pretty cool. You have natural resilience. You have resistance to acid and poison damage. And you have advantage on saving throws against being poisoned. Really, really nice little buff there. Uh, and then you have an ability called Shape Self. As an action, you can reshape your body to give yourself a head, one or two arms, one or two legs, and makeshift hands and feet. And you can revert to a limbless blob. While you have a human-like shape, you can wear clothing and armor made for a humanoid, humanoid of your size. As a bonus action, you can extrude a pseudopod that is up to 6 inches wide and 10 feet long, or reabsorb it into your body. As part of the same bonus action, you can use this pseudopod to manipulate an object, open or close a door or container, or pick up or set down some tiny object. The pseudopod contains no sensory organs and can cannot attack, activate magic items, or lift more than 10 pounds. This is honestly pretty cool. It's kind of like a, it's like a, a mage hand that's limited to, to 10 feet, but Again, it just gives you some additional flexibility to be able to do something that doesn't require casting a spell to help you know, aid in escapes or, or provide something to your party that you might not otherwise be able to do. So really cool features, again, that are just helping to distinguish uh, the races from each other. Really awesome. I'd love to see it. Last up, we have the three Crean. I'm going to pronounce it that way. And uh, <laughs> these are kind of like insectoids. So let's check this out. Uh, you are a monstrosity. I think that tracks. You are a medium or small. You choose when you select it. Your walking speed is 30 feet. Um, you have Chameleon Carapace. When you aren't wearing armor, your Carapace gives you a base armor class of 13 plus your dex mod, which is honestly quite reasonable. As an action, you can change the color of your Carapace to match the color and texture of your surroundings, which gives you advantage on dexterity stealth checks, as well as to hide in those surroundings. You have dark vision. You also have secondary arms. You have two slightly smaller secondary arms below your primary set of arms. The secondary arms can manipulate an object, open a door, close a container, pick up or set down a tiny object, or wield a weapon that has the light property. It's interesting we've seen so many of these different ways to kind of move things around and, and, and you know manipulate objects around you. This is the first one that can actually attack, so that's kind of cool, but I, I like this. I like kind of where they're heading with this. You know, Again, just giving different ways of interacting with the world around you. I think is really awesome. Uh, next up is sleepless. You do not require sleep and can remain conscious during a long rest, though you must still refrain from strenuous activity to gain the benefit of the rest. This is interesting in that it does sort of suggest that you also don't need to be kind of like meditating uh, like an elf, that you can kind of walk around and do things. As long as it's not strenuous activity, you can fully be awake for the entire period of a rest. So honestly, 
that's pretty cool. I think that's the first time we've seen anything like that. Lastly is Three Queen Telepathy. It says, without the assistance of magic, you can't speak the non Three Queen languages that you know. Instead, you use telepathy to convey your thoughts. You have the magical ability to transmit your thoughts mentally to willing creatures that you can see within 120 feet of yourself. A contacted creature does not need to share a language with you to understand your thoughts, but it must be able to understand at least one language. Your telepathic link is to a creature is broken if you and the creature are more than 120 feet apart, if either of you is incapacitated, or if one of you mentally breaks the contact, no action required. This is a really interesting way of inserting a different form of communication. Kind of gives me some Mind Flayer vibe, which I guess is you know, sort of on brand here, but uh, this is super cool. I, I really like it. I like that they don't necessarily need to share languages. Obviously, is something that we have seen before, but you know, building that into a race and having the range up to 120 feet uh, gives a lot of flexibility and versatility for uh, you know, planning some heists or some traps or manipulating some people or running a gambling ring. There's so many different things that you can do with that. So I think that that's really cool. It's an awesome uh, little feature to see here. So that's it. That is the look at the six new races that we got within Spelljammer Adventures in Space. As you can see, this is a pretty long book with, well, three separate books, really. So I am going to be publishing a full review on it, hopefully within the next couple of days. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you enter the giveaway if you're seeing this today before 5 p.m. Eastern as well. Uh, but otherwise, take care.